Okay, once again, another amazing guest on the Ortho Show. Wow, I'm like, I'm still energized just having finished the episode with Sarab Shah, who's an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, he is 36 years old, five years into practice, and he is the co-chief of sports medicine at New England Baptist Hospital, one of the, our country's great orthopedic hospitals. He directs the sports fellowship. He's the co-director of the shoulder and elbow fellowship. I'm like, I don't know how this guy gets it all done, but... He's passionate about research, about education. He's got a lot of wisdom for a young man, and he's going to provide some great counsel for anyone that's thinking about joining this great orthopedic field. Always a pleasure, Dr. Scott Sigmund, hashtag follow the fro. From medical media, this is The Ortho Show. Hello world, Dr. Scott Sigmund, your favorite opioid sparing orthopedic surgeon here for another episode of the Ortho Show podcast. Don't forget to listen to my new TED Talk on opioids as well. It's awesome. Where we have become the voice of orthopedics and we bring you the most amazing guests within the orthopedic industry. And today is no exception. Dr. Sarv Shah, who is an orthopedic surgeon, who is the co-chief of sports medicine at the one and only New England Baptist Hospital where I trained. I love that place also the Fellowship Director for Sports Medicine and the Co-Fellowship Director for Shoulder and Ele Elbow. Sarv, what a pleasure it is to have you on the show. Appreciate you having me. Looking forward to it. I've always uh, enjoyed your podcast. No, I appreciate it so much. So, you know, you are you are like the, one of these upstart rising star, you know, dudes that just is constantly, as I like to say, a machine de guerre, which is French for, you know, will not stop and push forward. But let's start from the beginning. You know, when did you decide, other than I know your Vindian descent, that your parents probably told you you were going to be a doctor at one point early <laughs> on in age. But just give us the story. Are there other doctors in the family, siblings, all that good stuff? Yeah, no, I mean, there's always that uh, parental pressure when you're Indian, for sure. No, no doubt. Uh, but no, no other doctors in my family, you know, growing up, you know, I've always enjoyed kind of helping people and, you know, uh, surgery was always in my mindset from high school. Um, you know, earlier than that, you know, my mom will tell you, I wanted to be a firefighter, you know, the typical kid stuff growing up, but in high school really kind of, you know, solidified for me. And to the point where I even, you know, I, I applied and, and I did the seven year program. So I, my med school interview when I was, when I was 16, junior in high school. Um, you know, people are like, how did you know? I'm like, you know, looking around, that's the one thing that I thought I could make a difference in the world, but yet still be happy with my life. You know what I mean? Happy going to work. And there's not really a, a grind, if you will. The grind is, you know, the time that it takes, but, it, you know, it's still fun. Right. So. No, that, that I mean, that's fantastic. So, again, so that's really fascinating, you know. Most kids at the age of 16 are excited to get their driver's license and go out and see the world and where they're going to get their next beer. And, dude, you're applying to Villanova and Drexel, you know, for a combined uh, college and medical school experience, which was probably like a seven-year program, I'm assuming. Seven-year program, yeah. So people always ask me, like, oh, weren't you drinking? Didn't you go out? I'm like, I, I was 20 my first year med school. They carded me. You know, med school, they, they sponsor the parties after the board, like the block exams. I got carded at these parties. I couldn't even drink until <laughs> second year med school. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, you're like a child prodigy, you're like Doogie Howser going in real early and stuff. But no, I mean, I think that's really fascinating that you had such, you know, such passion and drive to know exactly what you wanted. I think that theme is consistent into your professional career at this time as well, which we'll talk about. So, so tell us about the grind of a of a college medical school combination. What was that like? Um, so, you know, I was fortunate enough that my parents kind of put me in a you know situation to succeed. Right? We talk about sports all the time. You know, it depends on what situation you're in. You know, my parents moved to a you know kind of a a better suburb of Philadelphia with a better public school system. So I went to public school, but you know, my public school was probably better than most private schools. You know, I took how many AP credits? So going into Villanova, you know, while most people are grinding, I went into that as a second semester sophomore. So like by my, you know, my junior year, I was taking, I don't know if you follow Villanova basketball, Scotty Reynolds was in my classes. Like I took all the classes the basketball kids took just so I can enjoy a little bit. So I took intro to Africa. I took intro to acting. I got a business minor, you know, all those AP credits from high school really paid off. So I was able to enjoy, you know, kind of those years of college. Otherwise, 
you know, some of the kids in my program cracked a little, right? Like, you know, when you give up your college and you're just focused, 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 the tendency is most people can't, might not be able to, to withhold that kind of pressure. So, you know, we had three kids fail step one in my program. Um, you know, that, that puts a dent in your, in your life, you know? You know, and, and it's interesting because you, you just don't hear of that many people doing the combined program, right? I mean, it exists, but I think a lot of people want the college experience, right? And then sort of figure it out what you want to do, not sure it's going to be medicine, and then maybe even take a gap year, right? And then, yeah. but not Sarah, man, I'm like, I'm going in, I've got my blinders on. I'm like, this yeah, is what I want to do. Well you know, other than my wife and my kids, that like, that was the best decision of my life. I, I, I truly believe that, you know, I, I save a year on the front end and then I did an extra year on the back end, right? I had two fellowships, but that second year fellowship, I think was one of the most valuable years in terms of confidence, operating skill, and the ability to just take on, you know, maybe more stuff that most people, you know, in my, at my level wouldn't have, wouldn't have dreamed to take on, wouldn't have dared to take on, right? It gives you that kind of, stones if you will yeah no but, all right let's back up the beam footage a little bit you're jumping ahead here because you got a lot sorry, of cool sorry. stuff all right so you, you graduate the program your college and md program you do great you go off to hofstra to do your residency you want to throw some shout outs there for some mentors yeah. and people that helped you along the way definitely nick scaglione you know chairman you know lou lane program director I, they took a chance on me a seven-year kid you know I, i'm like this young kid that talks too much and you know Will he, won't he work, you know, so they took a chance on me, you know, I tried to make them proud and, you know, I'm glad that they did. I was able to get a good operative experience. It's more of a blue collar residency, not real research heavy. Right. So, you know, it's a whole bunch of sports spine and joints, um, not really trauma heavy either. So I was actually ha very happy about that. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I, always, I always question those crazy trauma guys that love to do that for a living. What a crazy world and, and life it is for sure. God bless uh, him. Someone's got to do it, right? God bless someone's him. Someone's got to do it, right. All, right. all right. So first of all, how old are you? I uh, just turned 36. So 36. Okay, great. So, you know, most people, I just got to ask this question because not all of our, our people are here, our, our, our viewers are also most of the time just listening. But, you know, most people at your age, you know, if they have gray hair, they're going to dye it to, to black. But do you do you dye your hair gray to give you some extra experience there on the side? No, this is real. This is real. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> I, got, I, got a haircut, I got a haircut to get rid of some of the grays because this is going to be on YouTube or whatever forever, right? So, <laughs> I love it. You got a haircut for the show. That's yeah, fantastic. Because it makes it look less. But yeah, I mean, I had one patient call me 45. I was like, listen, I appreciate the wisdom that it comes with being 45, but I am not 45. <laughs> well, take it all day long, bro. That's good, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. and you just jumped ahead a decade in career. Yeah. All right. So you do an amazing residency at Hofstra and then you get a great sports fellowship, right? You come up to the Baptist, you're going to spend a year. You're, you're working with, the, with, uh, who were you working with at the time? Who was who was uh, so in charge of the moment? Mark Steiner was the program director. You know, may he rest in peace. Uh, and Jr. John Richmond was was the the chief. You know, at the time, you know, I got the last six months of of Steiner and Jr. Essentially, um, you know, which you know, blessing. You know, all in a way. You know, so much wisdom to teach, and you know, I still tie Jr.'s not arthroscopically. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, going back, that that was a blessing in you know, kind of to begin with. If it wasn't for you know Nick Scaglione, I mean, I wanted to do shoulder elbow from the beginning, right? You know, Scaglione's one that sat me down and said, you know, listen, if you want to get a job, a good you know, an academic job, realistically speaking, most of them are sports. So his suggestion was do sports first, and if you still want to do a second one, then apply again. So you know, after I matched Baptist, I was extremely happy, but then there was still this like desire. I wanted to do shoulder elbow. So that's when I decided to apply again, you know, my chief year for, for the second fellowship. And then I, uh, I don't think I would have uh, even matched the Baptist if I hadn't run into Glenn at Academy. Like my PGY four year where I went to Academy, he was just walking around the abstracts. Uh, Glenn Ross, you got to say Glenn, Glenn Ross. Ross. Yeah, sorry, 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 Glenn yeah. Ross. Yeah, that's okay. Um, he was just reading the abstracts at Academy. And I went up to him like, oh, great to meet you. Loved your program, yada, yada. He's like, oh, really? I th we thought because you left, you didn't like it. I was like, no, no. I was I had to drive back to New York for another interview the next day. I love it. So for me, this is so full circle, okay? Just so you know. You know, I spent a lot of time at the Baptist as a resident. Um, and, uh, you know, Dr. Steiner, Mark was one of my, was one of my sports medicine mentors operating with him. Of course, we weren't doing arthroscopic at the time. And, and J.R. Richmond is my mentor, 
uh, from from the beginning as he was, you know, with me in my residency. He was the the attending that that helped me to get going as well. So I love that that part of the story. But I mean, it's still, you know, the term Mishigas, you know, it's Yiddish for a little crazy, right? To to sort of say, okay, I've got this awesome sports medicine fellowship, and literally you haven't even started the fellowship yet, and you're applying for a shoulder and elbow fellowship that you're going to wind up getting at HSS. You got to admit that's a there's a lot going on there. Yeah, you sound like my dad. That's literally what my dad said to me. My dad said I was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's not, at a certain point, he's not wrong. Like, you literally, financially, it's a stupid decision, right? Theoretically, sure. you're giving up a year of attending salary to then become, you know, for lack of better words, someone's minion again for another year. You know what I mean? Um, you know, making but, minimum but, wage. So, But I love your passion. And, and, the, and the idea was is that you knew that you wanted to get a, a killer academic position, which is not easy. Right. Especially, you know, more often than not, when we've had ortho show alumni, they've had to go someplace else for three or four years, take a job that they didn't really want to have. And then finally, the moment, you know, the seas part and the great job opens up and then they come back up. So you were thinking about it and more often. Than, so, the, so the second fellowship, I think, is really cool. So you got to give the shout outs too. you go to HSS in 2018. So who's driving the bus there? Who are your mentors? You know, give them give them the shout outs. So. Oh, definitely. So Daddy D David Dines, you know, I call him Daddy Dines because he was the pro, you know chairman of LIJ. You know, at, there was a changeover with Nick, you know, Scott Leon at the same time, uh, but he was still operating LIJ. So I, I, I knew I've known him for seven years, you know, pro, you know, before that five years residency and then plus the fellowships. Um, so D David Dines, for sure. Then Larry Gulotta, um was just kind of up and rising. He's kind of, you know, who I want to be in life. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, he just kind of started, they just started the shoulder fellowship. I think I was the third or fourth fellow, you know, overall. Um, and then Sam Taylor, you know, you got all-star cast, obviously HSS, you know, Sam Taylor, Scott Rodeo, uh, Josh Dines, um, Frank Cordasco was ASES president that year. Um, so just an all-star cast and you know how it is. Those guys, you know, they're, you want to be them, but you, you know, they're just so good. They're very humble, just skilled personable, you know, there's not, not a bad thing you can say about any of them. And then, and then you got the job too. I mean, we joke around on the show all the time about the hospital for surgeon's sons, right? There's a lot of nepotism that rolls through HSS, but dude, you got there on your own, which is awesome. So, you know, huge credit to you. So, so then, you know, I, I guess the job opens up. So tell us the history. You're doing the sports fellowship. You know, you're going to HSS. Everybody at the Baptist knows you're going to HSS at that point. When did you get offered the position to be able to come back to the Baptist, which you did basically right after your second fellowship? Yeah. So, you know, Glenn Ross, during my graduation, you know, he, he's he's the fellowship director at that time. Steiner, uh, Steiner has stepped down midway through my fellowship years. So Glenn Ross took over a fellowship director. So during my, you know, kind of graduation speech, diploma presentation, whatever you want to call it, he's literally calling me out in the in the graduation. He's like, we hope to recruit Sarab back you know, to come back after his, after his shoulder fell. I'm like, Oh, okay. That's news to me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take, yeah, definitely. Definitely. So then, you know, after that, you know, I kind of emailed him like, were you joking? Was that real? He's like, Rob, I never joke about stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, so, Glenn, Glenn's not much of a joker to be no, yeah, a pretty no, serious no. guy. I mean, he has his fun side, but yeah, very, very military, you know, military guy, serious yeah. guy. Um, definitely. So he's like, yeah, for sure. Uh, we kept in contact throughout my HSS fellowship, but I had my contract with, at the time he was private practice. So, uh, you know, affiliated with Baptist, most of Baptist uh, surgeons are private practice anyway. Uh, but I had my contract signed by Christmas of my, you know, during my HSS fellowship year. So, you know, I, I, I sort of joke around and please take this with all due respect, you know, but like, you know, in orthopedic years, you're like, you just got bar mitzvah. You know, I'm like, you're oh, 36 sure. years old. You've been in practice for like three years, two years. And like, boom, you're at one of the country's great orthopedic hospitals. You, you, the co-chief of sports medicine immediately, they give you the fellowship director for sports medicine. And then well, it's my fifth year, to be fair, it's my fifth year, but fifth know. year. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Dr. Bill Levine is our uh, fact checker. So he would have gotten that right for us anyway. <laughs> Uh, and then next thing you know, they're like, okay, you're, you're kicking ass and taking numbers. We're going to give you the, the shoulder and elbow. We want you to be co-chief of that too. And it's pretty impressive at 36 years of age to have all of those titles and that much responsibility. Yeah, no, I mean, it's been a, the grind is the time, right? You know, the passion is there. I love it. It's, it's, you know, kind of fulfilling for me. And, you know, I, I do it out of, you know, pure enjoyment. 
but the grind is the time for sure. So, you know, my wife always jokes, I live on chemicals, right? It's, it's caffeine and soda. I do the pre-workout, you know, the, the, what's the rock has this new energy drink that I love. The, the <laughs> Yeah. Joe Rogan, who's got the second best podcast in the, in America. He doesn't know it yet, but that's okay. He's got his energy drink going on too. Yeah, no, I mean, so that that's kind of where I get my energy from, but you know, it, it all comes from putting in the time and the effort, right? Like I, I, you know, I've been running the education for the sports fellowship for the past three, four years, whatever it's been, you know, uh, Glenn came up to me, you know, Glenn Ross and, and, you know, Tom Gill, Andy Jawa, you know, they all came up to me and, you know, we're taught, we were talking about starting a shoulder fellowship, but then someone's got to fill out the paperwork. Someone's got to create the educational content. Someone's got to make all the lectures, submit all the paperwork. You know what I mean? So I did all that. So that, you know, doing all the work does kind of put you in a position where, Someone does see that. Someone does respect that. And then, you know, to be able to get that is, is a blessing for sure. Um, but, you know, it comes at a cost. <laughs> yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, my kids just turned three in 10 months. Oh, my goodness gracious. I remember yep, those no, days no all sleep. too well. That's yeah, a lot no going on, brother. Yeah, um, yeah. And then you're also the team physician for Merrimack College as well as for Brandeis. So I'm sure the fellows help you on that. But, you know, I am the team doctor for UMass Lowell for over 30 years. So we got a little hockey thing going on here. So we're going to sum it up at the end of the year, and we'll see who's going to take somebody out to dinner, all right? The, 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 win, the winner of the series takes the other guy out for dinner. Is that cool? That's cool. That's all fair. Right. I, like, I like it a lot. All right, so listen, you know, amongst all of this other stuff that you're doing, one of the things that, that I really find quite impressive is your 10-page CV where you have 55 articles published. It's probably more than that by the time I looked at that CV. You got five book chapters. And so obviously in the academic perspective, you know, research and evidence-based medicine is tremendously important. What I found is really quite unique, which was very different than when I was in my training, there's a tremendous amount of collaboration now amongst centers, right? And I think that that is really unique as we're trying to develop consensus on a lot of these important issues. So you got the, you know, it's, you guys are always popping up papers. You got an HSS, you got a rush, you got this, you got five people that are all doing this work together and collaborating. How has that sort of developed for you? What, what's your sense of that? Yeah, I mean, part of, you know, a couple of those papers, I don't know if you saw, like the collaboration we did for the appropriate use criteria for the anatomic. I literally, you know, I wanted to make it a collaboration so there's no, there's less bias, right? It's the, part of it was an opinion-based paper of ASCS members. You know, I literally, you know, Gr Graue, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name pr properly, Michael Graue, I literally cold emailed him on LinkedIn to join the paper. You know, I had met him at a conference randomly, never got a contact information, seemed like a cool guy. He's the one that does the posterior total shoulders, posterior approach. I literally cold emailed him on LinkedIn. He was a cool guy. He responded, I sent him the protocol. He liked it. He agreed to join. You know, and it kind of grew grew from there. You know, BI has always been a, a valuable partner, and you know, we're part of the health system now for BILH. So that was a classic, you know, kind of no brainer collaboration. Um, HSS guys was kind of no brainer collaboration, and then you know, I kind of reached out to the LIJ, you know, kind of people who were down there, and you know, they connected me through other people, and it was just one person knows another, right? We're fixing a very small world, as you very well know. Yeah, no, that, that has become a lot smaller with the show. We've had just uh, so many tremendous, and it's Mike Grywe, by the way. Mike was our Sorry. very first guest on the Ortho Show podcast. Oh, really? Because of his, his telemedicine company, uh, Ortho Live, yeah, uh, yeah. which uh, at the time of the pandemic was really a very important thing. Uh, so that that's a, a, another sort another great story for sure. You know, it's funny. Again, I, I brought up Bill Levine, but I'm like, I'm sensing a lot of Bill Levine here. I'm like, you're, you, you've got so much going on and you're getting it all done, which I really love. Uh, and very, very proud of all of the accomplishments that you've had. And I'm going to joke around here a little bit with you, but it's like, you know, do you know Mike McDaniel is the head coach for the universe uh, for for Miami Dolphins yeah, and Kyle yeah, yeah. Shanahan? You're like you're like one of these young NFL coaches, right? You're you're practically the same age as your fellows that are coming through. You're you're a few years older, obviously, but is that how's that interaction going? Where they look at you and you're 36 and they're 32, and um, what? How does that interaction play out? Yeah, I mean, that's an excellent point. I mean, you know, they, especially, you know, I'd say five years, like my first year out, five, four or five years ago, you know, that was more of a struggle. Now it's, you know, it's pretty established where you know, we're in the OR. I've gotten all my stuff down. You know what I mean? I've gotten, you know, everyone gets better, right? So five years later, I'm a much better surgeon than I was five years ago, right? So, you know, I have all my stuff down to a T. I can, you know, kind of explain it more clearly, you know, um, it's less than it was in the beginning. In the beginning, yes, there was definitely that, hey, 
who's this guy? You know, he's the same age as me. You know, I, I'm, I'm good. Don't worry about it. You know, uh, you get that, you know, kind of one or two problem kids a year. Um, but, you know, this group has been fantastic. The next next year's group is going to be fantastic. Um, I think we're at a, a good a good place now. I don't know if you know, we're, we're upping, you know, we'll be four sports fellows next year. Um, Matt Salzer is joining our fellowship um, as, a, as another site. Talk about collaboration, right? Um, you know, that'll be a, a good add uh, to our sports fellowship. Um, and then the hope is that we can continue to grow. Um, my hope is to go to five sports and two shoulder elbow fellows. So, um, you know, the sky's the limit, I think. Yeah. So again, I, we love shout outs. So, it, you know, obviously it's not just you at the fellowship. You've obviously, you've got Alan Curtis, you got Glenn Ross, you got Tom Gill, Brian McKean. I'm sure is Brian in on, on the sports fellowship as well. Yeah. Brian, Brian McKean still, still a part of it. You know, he's kind of taken a, a step back in terms of fellowship teaching, but definitely Glenn Ross, Tom Gill, um, you know, Alan Curtis uh, on the shoulder elbow side, you know, Andy Jawa, you know, uh, Jacob Kirsch, Glenn Ross, obviously, um, you know, lot, lots of help, you know, wouldn't be possible without these people, right? You know, Tony Shannon on the sports side with the Celtics, you know, plays a huge, huge role. Um, you know, team coverage wise, Paul Weitzel did Tusk for so, so long. Um, an excellent teacher in the OR in terms of, you know, meniscal transplant, you know, kind of batshit crazy knee cases, um, all, all good things. And, you know, that's, that's the Baptist way, right? Yeah, you know it's funny. One of the one of the famous classic sayings is a lot of medical information gets out of Boston, but not a lot gets in. But I would tell you, you know, you probably maybe you've never heard that. I don't know, but you know, so but it's really nice. It's such a, a breath of fresh air to have some young new names uh, in orthopedics here in Boston. You know, you named it Jacob Kirsch and you know Andy Jawa and the things that you're doing as well. So it's just really nice to get some fresh some fresh blood in here to sort of circulate around and stir things up a little bit and great some get some really new ideas going on so kudos to you for sure now one of the other things that you're you know in your in your lack of your busy schedule that you have plenty of time for is you've chosen a path uh, to be involved in societies immediately in your career, probably in the midst of even your fellowships where you were developing this, where you're a part of AAO and you know, American Academy with Big Surgery, the, uh, the Sports Societies, ANA, AOSSM, uh, American Shoulder and Elbow Society as well. So, so where does that fit into your busy schedule? I think it's really obviously, it dovetails beautifully with your academic career. Yeah, I think, you know, in, in an era where reimbursements are dropping and, you know, time commitments are being more scrutinized. Um, I still think there's a valuable role for societies, obviously. Um, I think it really helps in building those relationships, right? The personal relationships that are key, especially in medicine, orthopedics. Um, but for me, you know, my wife hates it, but, you know, it, it's crucial, right? So even for academy in february i'm going for a day and a half right I, you know i'd give my talk do my evaluation and fly back from san francisco but you got to do it it's, you know it's a it's a kind of a must in the academic world in order to keep build new relationships keep relationships you know kind of be in on as, as you know the newest technologies that's kind of the exposure that you need um, but yeah, definitely had some uh, negotiating with the wife in terms of, can I go to this conference? I'll do it on a, I'll, I'll take the red eye. You know what I mean? Um, well, it's okay. Joe, Joe Abood will go to every conference that you can't go. and He'll make sure that that shoulder is well <laughs> represented. I love you, Joe. Uh, but we, we joke around about that. All right. So listen, I, I love that. Again, I think it's so important to be able to to, to develop our community of education and being able to share, you know, it's really, and especially in an academic setting, you have to be a part of that. Now, I'm a little disappointed about one thing here, though, Sarah. I'm like, you got a tie on. I'm like, what's going on with that? Nobody wears a tie anymore. You're making me look bad. Oh, I figured for the podcast. Otherwise, I'm telling you, man, I had to wait over in the morning. Then I came, you know, to, to clinic in the afternoon. I changed just for this. Oh, I love it. You know, I look at Michael Ast, who's like the new generation. You know, Michael from HSS yeah, yeah. as well. And and every time I see him, I he, wear, know, he wears Mike, a Mike was, was yeah, my ahead. chief when I, when I was an intern. Yeah, at, of course. So, yeah. so Mike now wears, you know, he wears a suit with like a nice shirt, no tie. And then he's got his kicks on, you know, he's got all these fancy Nike, like high top sneaks that he wears. I think it's it's awesome. And that's sort of the new generation. I wear flip-flops and scrubs to work now. That's like, I've I got enough gray hairs and age at this point that I wear what I want to be comfortable in for sure, you know? That's awesome. 
You have flip flops in the in the office in the winter. Flip flops in the office. I know my partners look at me like they're like I'm crazy, but toes and froze. That's what we say. It's all good. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> All right. So listen, man. So let's give some advice. You know, you're in this position. You're in a unique position, right? You're early in your career. You're five years in, but yet you're in an academic spot. You're fellowship directors. Let's give a little advice to some of the orthopedic medical or medical students or residents or people that can help to advance their career. What would you say to them um, as they're, they're sort of moving forward to try and identify a path to success? Well, I'll take I'll take from you know my mentors, you know, Nick Scaglione. I think this is the best piece of advice that I got. You know, try not to say no, right? People offer opportunities, people offer different, you know, kind of pathways that maybe you didn't think you were going to do. Try not to say no. You can theoretically, you're in this position because you're a hard worker, right? Because you're type A personality, whatever you want to call it, you'll figure out the time. As long as you can get it done and do a good job, it always leads to bigger and better things. Try not to say no. That's the number one piece of advice I can give. The other piece, you know, from my my own personal life, I would do the second fellowship, right? As much as you lose money wise, as much as you know, it's a gut punch, really, after one fellowship to then say, oh yeah, let me do this again, another year of, you know, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> kind of uh, not really scut work, but scut work, right? You know, making little and working long. Um, I cannot explain to you the value of it in terms of confidence, in terms of skill, in terms of ability, stones, right? The ability to take on whatever it is. Like I will, I take anything in the shoulder. Um, and that opens up more doors than you think, right? When the PCP can say, I don't care what it is, I'll send it to Sarav. That opens up way more doors. If my partners say, I can screw up a roach to the golf or I can screw up whatever it is, Sarav will fix it. That, that will open up employment doors. That'll open up referral doors. That'll open up, hey, Sarab does elbow. Hey, Sarab does hip, you know, I don't do hip, but and, and knee, ankle, you know, whatever. That opens up so many doors. I think that's really terrific advice. You know, I think time is our is our most precious commodity. Uh, and as, as a person that has mastered maintenance of time, uh, I can say somehow it seems like you've squeezed out an extra three hours in a day compared to the rest of us at 24. But you know, look, you're. I, I just love your passion. I just just love your attitude about success and moving forwards. You know, your ability to educate and do research and really push uh, the orthopedic in, uh, uh, team to try and identify new paths and new concepts and new ideas is absolutely amazing. I think that there are big things coming your way, Sarav Shara, and you are now officially an Ortho Show alumnus. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Really appreciate it. The one thing I'll, I'll leave you with, if you'll let me, um, you know, the one thing I try and instill in the fellows and, you know, my younger brother and, you know, anybody who asked me, you know, you don't go into medicine to make money. If you, if you go into medicine to make money, you chose wrong. You go into medicine to make a difference. So take this time, take this opportunity with God, evolution, whatever you believe. They've given you talents and gifts. Try and use it for the betterment of society. Great, great finish and really a terrific work, Sarab Shah. It is a pleasure. This is Dr. Scott Sigmund, hashtag follow the fro, host of the Ortho Show. Till next time.